Yes, welcome along to the Racing Postcast in association with the Racing Post Members Club with David Jennings, Robbie Wilders and Tom Park. This is the dream team that's never actually happened before and you've got it live in front of your very own eyes for the first time. Robbie Wilders, Tom Park and David Jennings. Welcome everybody to the Racing Postcast. How are you doing lads? Tom Park, I don't I think I've I don't think I've ever done a postcast with you. Yeah, I don't know if we have. Maybe one maybe one I, I don't know. But yeah, it's definitely a rarity. So can't wait. Looking forward to it. I think I'm definitely the worst looking member of this group anyway today. But anyway, we'll kick on. Robbie Wilders, how's your form? Doing well, thanks, mate. Yeah, yourself? Uh, not too bad, yeah. I'm knee deep in a Willie Mullen stable tour at the moment, which is out on Monday, six o'clock Sunday evening for uh, Racing Post Members Club members. And uh, it's in the paper on Monday. So I'm knee deep in that at the moment. And let's just say it's not a it's not a thoroughly enjoyable experience. It's a labour of love. It's about ten thousand words. Are you coming back to me with a reply there, Robbie? No. Sorry, I was uh, <laughs> I was I was watching the. Uh, the <laughs> you you had zoomed I, out. I, I've just crashed out the place plot. Um, so I was investing in that. Uh, yeah, it does. I mean, I used to I used to sub those back in my old role, and they take an awfully long time. So I have a lot of respect for what you're doing. It needs to be done, but it is tiring. Okay, and very hard luck with your play spot there at uh, Newbury, Robbie. Uh, so we're going to crack on with the action. It's uh, it's going to be fast. It's going to be furious. We've got plenty to cover. And the first race we're going to kick off with on Saturday is the 115 at Wincanton. It's the Boodles Conditional Jockeys Handicap Chase. And currently, Hugo is currently our 92 favourite. Uh, best price in the industry at the moment. Another Crick is 7-1. to one. Midnight Midge is also 7-1. to one. Uh, Valkova... Valkova is 15 to 2. Dibble Decker is 8 to 1, and it is 10 to 1 bar. Robbie, we'll kick off with you. Kick us off with a winner, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to. Um, I've, I thought out of all the races we're going to preview, this was by far the most difficult. So I'm going to pass this one on to my friend Tom there. Oh, Lord. Such a start. <laughs> Holy Straight God. Away. Okay. Straight away. No big right. race, man. Um, yeah, well, uh, I. I Follow that, Tom. How do you follow that, Tom? He wants even to pass you, it as well. Even if you give us a loser, even if you give us a horse that trails in last of all the runners here, you would be doing a better job than Robbie Wilders. Well, yeah. I'm quite surprised at the price of one of them here. So um, I quite like Volkov. Volk- 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 <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I couldn't pronounce it either. Yeah, if you Volk- heard my yeah. attempt. Look, she's she slid down the handicap quite a lot. I think she was rated 132 um, at the start of last year. Um, she's come right down. Um, and look, her last she's been beaten by a horse called La Renome on her last two starts. Um, the form of the last run at Ludlow has worked out particularly well. Um, she was second. I think she's beaten half length or something. Um, La Renome, struggle to say that one as well. She's up 13 pounds since then. The third um, is up sixteen pounds. That's Walking Clover. Um, they pulled fourteen lengths clear, so it looks like quite a good race. Um, I think she's she went up a couple of pounds that run. Um, I think she's definitely well handicapped. Um, it's just this stage of the season whether she's fit enough. But she's won first time out before. Um, Liam Harrison is a very good three pound claimer um, for the Fergal O'Brien team. So yeah, it is Volkovka for me. <laughs> it's like a, a pronunciation postcast at the moment so far. We're, we're, we're five minutes in and the pronunciation hasn't been, uh, let's just say, fantastic. But uh, it is uh, the horse that neither of us can pronounce. We think it's Volkovka. I think it's Volkovka. That's what I'm going to go with for Tom Park. The one that I liked at a bit of a price was Alto Alto. Alto. Uh, who I thought was a little bit overpriced at about nine to one, um, hasn't been seen since May, but was sent off two to one favourite to defy a mark of 114 at Plumpton, down a pound to 113. I thought the win prior to that Plumpton was a good performance, so I'm going to take a chance on Alto Alto in the 115, and Robbie Wilders has no selection whatsoever. Moving on to the Rising Star Novices Chase at 150, Nappers Hill is all the rage here at 813, best price in the industry. Captain Combi for Dusty Sheehy and Tom Bellamy is 4-1. to one. Diane Star, the unbeaten Diane Star, winner of a point to point and two wins on the rules of 7-1. to one. Javega, who I think could have a big season this season, is 8-1 to one for Jamie and Gary Moore. Lady Adair, 16-1 to one. opening bid, 33-1. to one. Well, Robbie, you started with a whimper. Can you come in with a bang here? Yeah, I mean, it's better to, to draw 0-0 than lose 1-0, isn't it? So, I think I'm going to go 1-0 up now with Nappers Hill. It's not exactly original, but, I mean, if this was a handicap, he'd be getting £13 from 
Uh, sorry, he'd be conceding £13 for the second favourite. He'd be conceding about £25 for the rest of the horses. Uh, I just think he's the best horse in the race. I know he lost on his chasing debut at Chepstow, but Unexpected Party was a, a pretty smart second season, obviously. He kept a good company last season. And uh, I thought there was plenty to like. He jumped pretty well. Um, Paul Nichols said in the stable tour, he's not sure, too sure about soft ground for him. But, I mean, you look at his form, he's, he's managed to beat Goshen in the select hurdle at Sandown, going right-handed on soft ground. So I think there's nothing wrong with the surface whatsoever. And uh, I think he's going to be very tough to beat. Tom Park is a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I was quite impressed with him, even though he got beat at Chepso. What I liked, I think it was three out. He kind of just took off. And he had about six or seven lengths to find with Unexpected Party. The time was getting quite an easy time of things up front. But it was the way that he kind of took off. He didn't quite get alongside, but he just tied towards the end. He just screamed of a a horse that was crying out for the run. Um, I'm less concerned about the ground. A couple of seasons ago, he looked like he was a real top-of-the-ground horse. But um, he's got some decent form on soft ground now. Um, He jumped brilliantly. Um, And I just think that he's... Look, unexpected pie was a, a, second, a second season novice. Um, he's going to have an advantage over these um, in the jumping department, I would think. I would agree with you with Javega. He's the horse that I am fearing the most. Um, I think he is set for a decent season, and I, I, I can't wait to see what he does over fences. But it's a tall, tall, tall task, I think, to take on Nappers Hill first time out. So, um, yeah, unoriginal, but Nappers Hill for me. Three votes for Nappers Hill. Currently, best price, 8.13. Nappers Hill has been supported. Uh, final declaration. Obviously, it's a t- tasty race, but we think that Nappers Hill is going to make a tasty chase. They're moving on to the 2.25. It's the Badger Beer Handicap Chase. And the lovable Frodon is currently our 3-1 to one joint favourite with 300 through 5. The big breakaway is 13-2, to two, who's broken my heart on many an occasion. Also 13-2, to two, Ashtown lad Sam Brown, 10-1. to one. 11 to 1 forward plan. It is 12 to 1, certainly red. We'll go for a full show. Bally Griffin Cottage is 14 to 1, 16 to 1, Gustavian. It is 16 to 1, Blackjack Magic, and 25 to 1, outsider of the fields. The horse who wins plenty of races, Courtland, Tom Park. Have you a strong opinion here? I think Frodon will win. Um, I is was that the okay. heart or the head, or is it both? Um, I, I would say the head, really. I just think that he. We won this brilliant style last year. Um, he didn't run awfully badly after that. And to get him back down to the same mark, I just, at this stage of the season, horses that you absolutely know this is their Gold Cup, and it is absolutely fraud on Gold Cup, I would think. Um, that, that's a significant advantage. Um, so I am going to side with fraud on. Um, three under through five is a horse who is very much on my radar this season. He was so last season. Um, he's had a wind up over the summer. I think that's going to bring out significant improvement. Um, I just wonder whether he'll come on for this. Um, I'm happy to leave him alone, particularly at the prices. And he's actually a good bit short than I thought. I think fraud on it around 3 1 is, is a solid bet here. Um, I couldn't put anyone off who's fancy. I certainly wouldn't want to be laying fraud on. Um, at a massive price, um, I think certainly Red has got some form to kind of mix it with these. Again, it just boils down the fact that who's going to kind of come on for this. And I just really like the fact that Frodon's going to be fit and firing. So it will be fraud on for me. Even you, Robbie Wilders, even you, who's like, you know, hard hitting form expert, even you can appreciate the beauty of Frodon, I'd say, can you? Uh, yeah, I love Frodon. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, he's done us all a few favours over the years. Um, he's got to be your favourite jump source around. But uh, I don't know. Is he at his best on soft ground? It's completely different conditions to when he won this last year. It was really quick last year. It's going to be pretty soft. I don't know if he's in love with it completely. He's got to give a lot of weight away to some interesting young horses. Uh, the horse I nearly put up in the anti-postman earlier in the week was Blackjack Magic. Um, he's about 16 to 1. I like him. Uh, I was The only reason I didn't put him up was because he was entered the extra on Friday, but he's running here. Anthony Honeywell runs for Rex Dingles up. So that suggests he's a stable number one. But this horse, essentially, he loves soft ground. He's only run four times over fences. He was a very progressive novice chase last year. And he's only going off 10 stone too. So I think there's, there should be a lot more to come. And uh, I don't know what you lads think about this, but in terms of horse's weight, I mean, he's, on his last five starts, he's carried 11 stone 10, 11 stone 7, 
11 stone 8, 12 stone 1, 11 stone 13. And now I know it's a better race, but he's only off 10 stone 2. I mean, that, that's got to make some sort of difference. It doesn't really get spoken about. I don't know what you think, but uh, blackjack magic. It's like it's like uh, I've been on him for his last couple of starts, and then one of you has taken over in the in the saddle. So it's a uh, blackjack magic for you at a standout sixteen to one. We like that, Robbie, and it was almost part of the anti postman earlier on in the week. So punters, I'm sure, will be latching onto that. It is Froden for uh, Tom Park. Three under two five is one of those horses who I think there is a big handicap in him, but I don't think there's a really big handicap in him if that makes sense. So I just wonder, is this the one? I don't think he's going to win a Grand National. I don't think he's going to win a Carl Gold Cup. I wonder, is this his big chance? He's off 147. The thing, the problem here is that he's not, you know, he's not a 155 horse. He's he's probably 150 horse. So he might have two or three pound up his sleeve. I just wonder, is this his day? Uh, Harry Cobden takes over in the saddle. Hasn't ridden him for ages because the Hes, Hes, Adrian Heskin um, was the stable jockey uh, for the McNeil. So I don't know. I just think this could be the day for three under two five. So I am going to side with him for all that. I don't think he's particularly uh, decent value at around about three Paul to Nichols, one. Move. Paul Nichols has an incredible record in this race, doesn't he? I think he, he's, uh, we did something the weekend of this week. He's plus 45 and a half, I think, in this race, which is pretty phenomenal. And that's like, it's not just a couple of big price wins. I think he's had 10 wins. Well, again, it'll be a 10 wins. Well, present man, seconds, present four, man, one, present man definitely won it twice, and then I remember Harry Cobden gave "Give Me a Copper" an absolute peach of a ride to win, yeah, and exactly, obviously yeah. Froden won it last year. So I'd say he's won it four times since maybe 2017. Yeah, he's won it ten times in total, which is pretty phenomenal. Out of 48 absolutely. runners. So yeah. the chances are he could win it again here because he's got Froden and three under two five. So it's Froden for Tom Park, three under two five for myself and Robbie Wilders is going with the flyer. Black Jack Magic for Robbie at 16 to 1. That is what's going to be a cracking Badger Beer handicap chase at 225. Moving on to the 3 o'clock, it is the beautifully named Jennings Bet Elite, Elite Hurdle. And uh, Rubaw is currently our 5 to 6 favourite. Hansard is 7 to 4. West Balboa, who's doubly engaged, remember that, also entered at Aintree is 10 to 1. 40 to 1, Sacre Coeur. Glorious off is 50 to 1. And I can't wait to hear what Robbie Wilders has to, has to say about this. It looks like a match on paper. Is it going to develop into a match or is one of the best bets of the weekend in this race, Robbie? Yeah, I think it probably will. Uh, West Balboa is worth saying her first preferences for that Aintree race. And I think you just look at her profile, it'd be a surprise, really, if you step down from three miles at Aintree to, to go back down to two here at Wincanton. Um, I think it is a match. Uh, Rubo has to give Hansard six pounds. Uh, that might be tricky. I, I'm not sure. Rubo, all, his, all of his forms on a pretty sound surface. He, he didn't show much on soft at one time he encountered it as a novice last season. Um, I mean, Paul Nichols is obviously happy to run him, but... I don't know. I think giving six pounds Hansard might be tricky. I mean, the way the way he travelled when he was four for Aintree in that Grade One uh, was quite eye-catching. He looked like a very good, good horse there. Um, I don't know. We, it's the question is how fit is he going to be? His first time out, Rubo's had a run, but he was entered to run on the flat a couple of weeks ago in Nottingham, but that was that uh, meeting was cancelled. So I think I might take it on trust. I mean, Gary Moore's had a, a couple, quite a few uh, first time out horses running really well this season. So preference would edge towards Hansard for me. So, Robbie, uh, you say that uh, Gary Moore's uh, stable have had some uh, decent horses run, run well first time out, but he's only had two winners from his last 33 runners, would you believe? Would you be worried about stable form going into that race, even though he did have a winner at Warwick the other day and Botox has won at Weatherby on Saturday? Yeah, I'm, I must admit, uh, I wasn't in tune to, to those numbers. That's quite that's quite striking. But, I mean, I was really impressed with what Botox has last week. And going back, I mean, we were on a couple of weeks ago, weren't we? I, I think Haddock Zobo would have won that race if he didn't fall down to last. So, I'm not overly concerned by that. I just think getting the six pound is probably going to tilt it in his favour on this ground. OK, so we've one vote for Hansart. I think Rubo will win. I think that run under his belt. And I thought he was quite impressive at Kempton. That'll do for me. One vote for Rubo. One vote for Hansart. Tom Park, you have the casting vote, my friend. Yeah, I really like Rubo here. Um, I think he's he's probably a good thing. Um, he just oozed class at Kempton last time. I, I do agree with Robbie's point about a slight concern about the ground, which would probably stop me going really. But I, I just think that this is a class horse. Um, he's looking better and better with each run. Um, he had a couple of blips last year. Um, it, the, the Betfair hurdle was just a really muddling race, so you can put a line through that. 
Um, the other time it was on soft ground when he was beaten, being by a good horse. I think he's miles better now. He just those those couple of runs at the end of last season were were properly good, and he beat some good horses on his comeback at Kempton. Um, I think there was like the likes of Soul Royal and First Street um, in there. So that that's pretty solid form. Um, I think he'll take all the beating here, and I think if you're getting or just a short of even money, I think. Absolutely, I, I think he's a good thing. It's two votes for Rubo. A good thing, according to Tom Park. I think he'll win, but I don't think he's a good thing. And Hansard is the selection of Robbie Wilders. Moving on to the final race we're going to preview at Wincanton on Saturday. It's the 3.32. It is a Jennings bet. Richard Barber Memorial. Mayor's Handicap Hurdle. Lime Avenue after wind operation is 9-4 to four favourite. I love the nightlife, as my two guests do, is 4-1. to one. Vicky Vale is 11-2. to 6-1, to one, plenty of time. 8-1, to one, great snow. We're going to keep going because Space Voyage is 16-1. to 22-1, to one, good luck charm. And Astrava do Berlay is 25 to 1. Parky, we'll kick off with you here. I'd be really keen on Vicky Vale, but I have a nagging doubt about the skeleton form. Um, might be that I've just, I've just backed a couple of his losers this week, which would have ran pretty poorly, but he is 6 from 52 in the last two weeks, which for Dan Skelton this time of year is not really brilliant. Um, but the wind was... operation is a big deal here because we all know if Vicky Vale. Like Vicky Vale, if, if any of our listeners or viewers have seen Vicky Vale run, she's a tear away who stops very quickly sometimes. But she did find a little bit of taunting last time, but she's had a wind operation and that yeah, might I get th- the best in her. I think you're right. This is it, it, the, the scale, I'm going to back her still. Um, she was dead impressive first time out last season. And as you said, when she kind of gets loose at the end, she can be absolutely devastating. The skeletons, Dan Skelton obviously thinks Lord's over because. She was pitched, I think, second time out last year. She ran the shallow. Um, so to pitch her in a grade one against against the boys straight after a, a maiden win, um, she's obviously, they obviously think she's quite good. Um, she flopped then. She flopped again in a grade two behind. You wear it well. Um, but you can excuse that. This is, look, she's ra- she's racing off a mark of 118. I suspect the skeletons will have been thinking that she was going to be a miles better than that at the start of last season. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take a chance. I have a nagging doubt about the form um, of the, the stable, but they've had winners. It's not as if they're like, um, and as I said, it could just be a recency bias that I've just backed a couple of losers, and it might not be anything to do with the um, the form of the stable. But yeah, it Vicky Vale is the one for me here. Um, yeah, the wind off is the big thing. I, I, I think you're absolutely right. That could be the key to it. Okay, so it's Vicky Vale for Tom Park. Robbie, could Lime Avenue, who also has had a wind operation, be absolutely chucked in here off 118? I think so, yeah. I, I think there are three really well handicapped horses. We spoke about one of them, Vicky Vale. Lime Avenue is the other, and I love the nightlife is is the other. Um, Lime Avenue, the concern for me is the ground. Um, we know she's also had, had a breathing done, but she, Paul Nichols stressed in his stable tour that he wants it to dry out before Wing Canton. I'm not sure exactly how much it's going to my sort of assessment was it's probably going to be pretty pretty soft going. So I'd be against her. I'll probably have a reverse forecast on Vicky Vale and I Love Nightlife. For all the reasons you've outlined about Vicky Vale, uh, sort of reminds me of a bit of West Balboa for the same connections a couple of seasons ago. We didn't we didn't see the best of her until she started handicapping in the second season over the hurdles. I think you're going to see a lot more from Vicky Vale this season. I mean, with Tristan Doyle's £5 claim, she's effectively running off 113. She's definitely better than that. It's just if, if he can keep a lid on her. Uh, I love the nightlife we should also talk about. Uh, this filly won a grade two, the grade two mayor's handicap at Newbury. It's been won by some some good horses in recent times. Uh, Snow Leopardess, Annie Mack, Roxana, the grade one winner for the Skeltons. Uh, she was carrying more weight than all of them. And they all progressed to be sort of 150 plus mares. She's off 125. Uh, you can ignore her next start at Cheltenham. She went off a 92 chance for a listed race. Uh, that came on really quick ground. Uh, it was a, she was giving weight away to mares like a horse of no name who followed up at Royal Ascot. I think she's an interesting one. And uh, I could see Lime Avenue taking a bit of a drift in the market myself. So for me, it's between those two. Excellent. So those are the races we're previewing at Wing Canton. Before we get stuck into Newcastle and Aintree, we're going to have a look at the 220 at Down Royal. I'll be there. 
It is the Labrox champion chase and Jerry Kalam, your second favourite for the Cheltenham Gold Cup, is your five to six favourite. A little bit on the drift from four to five. Four to one Manila Indo, conflated at six to one with last year's winner. Envoy Allen also a six to one shot. Robbie, Jerry Kalam, where do you stand with him? Is he a genuine Gold Cup contender? Oh yeah, for sure. But is he a genuine down Royal champion chase winner? I don't know. Uh, I mean, he, he, of course, of course, he is. He's probably the best horse in the race at the moment. But I mean, you did the stable tour of Elliot, didn't you? He's he's come out and said it's all about Cheltenham. I don't know exactly how fit he's going to be. I think that's that's the key, really. But I think he's got three pretty decent rivals to beat here. Uh, they've all had a run behind them. I think Envoy Allen's interesting. Uh, his form behind Gentleman's Game is looking much better now after what he did against Brave Man's Game. Uh, even conflated, you'd expect big improvement for his return behind Manella Rindo. He was giving Manella Rindo a lot of weight that day. And Manella Rindo himself was quite revitalised. So, I don't know. I think the percentage call for me is just to lay Jerry because I don't Ooh. know how ready he's going to be. Ooh. And I think any one of the three could beat him. Robbie Wilders is laying Jerry Kalam, the biggest challenger to jet, gallop in the champs, according to the market in the Chetland Gold Cup. Robbie Wilders is laying him. Where do you stand, Tom Park, with Jerry Kalam? Yeah, I'm really excited to see how he gets on this season. Um, but I'm kind of siding with Robbie. And if, if I want to be against him at all, this is probably, before Cheltenham anyway, this is probably the race that I'd like to take him on with. Um, I just think the betting's all wrong. I, I can't believe Envoy Allen is the outsider of a lot of them. I mean, he's, has he ever been beaten at Down Royal? I don't think he has. Never um, been beaten at Down Royal. Yeah, he won this race last year. Like, I think the general consensus of his Ryanair win was that he kind of got lucky and Shishkin kind of flopped. And But like, he, he oozed class through that race. Um, he won quite easily in the end. Yeah, Shishkin didn't show up. But he was certainly, even if Shishkin shows up, he, certainly, he was certainly the second best in that race. Um, I just think when things fall for... And while and he does seem to show his class, and I think this will have been Bar Cheltenham in March. This will have been the big target for the De Bromets, given that he was impressive in this race last year. He's unbeaten at the track. Um, I thought his his first run out was perfectly acceptable. Um, yeah, I, I really like him. I think six to one is a massive, massive price. I thought he'd be. I thought he'd be about five to two. So, um, yeah, six to one. I'm more than happy to get involved there. What was it? All, you make a very interesting case, but was also interesting as part of your case was, did you ever notice consensus is one of those words that you can't say without saying general beforehand? So you have to say general <laughs> consensus. It's utterly yeah. bizarre. Yeah, it is quite a superfluous word in that sense. Yeah. You don't really need to say it, do you? No, you don't, but everybody does. <laughs> So, like, the general consensus is that everybody says general before consensus, which is quite quite, quite, uh, quite strange. But you make a compelling case for NVLN, who the better the ground, the better chance he has. It's been dry enough over the last 48 hours here in Ireland. So I do think he is interesting, but he's just one of those. You just never know what he's going to do, do you? You never know what Envoy Allen right. is going to do. One Six thing I would, would say was, he did drift from long odds on to about 13 to 8 before Goran that's quite a, that takes a bit of doing so I imagine he probably wasn't ready I know he won he won the first time out last season but maybe they've trained him differently I don't know but, well heavy yeah. ground he has wind issues so heavy ground at Goran Park would have been completely against him I do think you're right I do think he's interesting but I am against you lot this is the day that Jerry Kalam announces himself onto the big stage I think he's a 7 year old these are like I think Envoy Allen conflated and Manila Indo They've all been exceptional horses, but they're they're either going to plateau or they're going to get worse. Jerry Kalam is going that way. They're all going that way. And uh, I think uh, I think he's the big improver in the race. And I think he is going to get the job done. But it's going to be fascinating. That is the Labrox Champion Chase. It's not to be missed. It's 2.20 at Down Royal on Saturday. And join us after the break when we'll be getting stuck into the cards at Newcastle and Aintree. Do you want over £500 in free bets? Well, the best free bet offers are now all in one place. Head to racingpost.com forward slash free bets where you can find all the offers from your favourite bookmakers. Click the link in the description to find out more. Yes, welcome back to the Racing Postcast brought to you by the Racing Post Members Club with David Jennings, Robbie Wilders and Tom Park and we're going to go all weathering. So we are. It is the Virgin Bet Daily Extra Places Irish EBF Gillies, Philly Stakes. My God, that is a mouthful. It is a listed race. It's over a mile, two furlongs and 42 yards. 
It is a wide open affair, but currently your favourite at the moment is three to one Veil of Shadows. Uh, Mukadama six to one, seven to one Sound Angela persist is nine to one, and it's ten to one bar. Tom Park, what wins? The Virgin Bet daily extra places Irish EBF Gillies Philly Stakes a listed race. Easy beauty. Uh, I like Veil of Shadows. Um, I think that. But Charlie Appleby's been a little, he's had a bit of a disappointing season for his ridiculously high standards. Um, but he is right back in form. Um, she was second in the group three last time, um, beaten by a progressive filly of Gary Moore's, I think we were talking about earlier in Norvis. Um, but had some good horses in behind, likes of Boogie Woogie and Unless, um, and including Persist and Mukadama, who reappears here. Um, they have 16 and 30 lengths to find with Veil of Shadows. So on that run anyway. Um I just think, yeah, I think I think Veil of Shadows is I think she's rock solid here. Um I'll be getting involved. Um it's a tricky little race, but look, Charlie Appleby's they're they're flying at the moment. Um I think he's gonna have a good day at Newcastle. So yeah, and it'll kick off with this one. So Veil of Shadows for me. Well, you spoke about Charlie Appleby's good form there. From his last 18 runners over the last fortnight going into Thursday evening's racing, uh, he's had six winners, four seconds and two thirds. So his his team could not be in better form, the Char- Charlie Appleby team. And of course, he won with Master of the Seas in uh, the Breeders' Cup Mile and also just hit the crossbar with Silver Knot at Santa Anita as well. Robbie Wilders, what wins the Virgin Bet? Daily Extra Places, Irish EBF, Gillies, Philly Stakes, a listed race. Christ. Um... Yeah, I get, I get what Parky's saying about uh, Vela Shadows. He's ob- she's obviously finished out of a few of these last time. Uh, Mukadama was sort of nowhere to be seen there. But Mukadama, looking at her profile, she just doesn't like soft ground. Whenever she's run on soft, she's flopped badly on it completely. And she's one from one on the all-weather. Uh, um, basically, I think the form of a uh, second John Musker stakes at Yarmouth is probably the best piece of form in this. And that was only two starts back. Being Infinite Cosmos, who's considered an Oaks contender in the season, Alice Sifa, uh, some some pretty solid some solid fillies there, and uh, I just sort of like hold up horses at Newcastle and that got a kind of style of racing suits that track. I uh, think she'll definitely be in, in the shake up, and you're getting uh, four places, so she'll do for me each way. What was the name of her again? I just missed because I was watching the finish to Allegory de Vassi in the background there. What, was oh, what happened? Name? What happened in that? <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. I, Allegory de Vassi won. Thank you. Uh, Mukadama. Mukadama for you. It is Veil of Shadows uh, for Tom Park. And I thought Sound Angela was really interesting here for Roger Varian and David Egan. Uh, she's one of these Philly Sound Angela who has been unlucky so many times in her career. And I do think a race like this is just perfect for her. There shouldn't be any hard luck stories in Newcastle. I think she's a big player, Sound Angela. So there you go. It's Veil of Shadows for Tom Park. Mukadama for uh, Rob Robbie Wilde. Angela for myself moving on to the 205 at Newcastle the Virgin Bet every Saturday money back Wentworth Stakes also a list of race sense of duty back from his run on Champions Day it's 5-2 to 13-2 Brad the Brief Al Bashir my old buddy old pal is 8-1 to one. Juan Le Pins is 8-1 to one. it is 11-1 to one bar Robbie you can go first on this Wentworth Stakes yeah, I mean, basically all of these, apart from sense of duty, are kind of high class handicappers. So I think you would really be disappointed. I did call uh, uh, erroneously. I did call sense of duty. Yeah, he, she is, of course, a she. Sorry, continue. It's all right, mate. We were gonna let we we're gonna let that slide. It's fine. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice to tone up. But uh, yeah, sense of duty. I think. Well, we, we were hoping she was going to be a Group One horse this season. She went off 14s for the Champion Sprint at Ascot. Um, don't know exactly what went wrong there, but I feel like it's always been a rush to get her there. Um, she put up her most sort of demonly performance uh, at Newcastle over this course and distance when she uh, beat Anaf nearly five lengths in the chip chase stakes last season. So she clearly likes it on the sand. And uh, I think she's a, a strong fancy, uh, short enough price, but I think she'll beat these. I think that she's in a different league to these. In a different league, sense of duty for Robbie Wilders. Tom, do you agree? Yeah, I do, yeah. Um I think she is in a different league. I, I'm surprised she is actually as big as she is. I thought after declarations, the one that I was fearing that was in the race was significantly, um, and when he wasn't declared, I thought uh, I expect her to be a good bit shorter than she is. I still think she might go off a good bit shorter than five to two available. Um, but similar to what Robbie said, um, I think her comeback run after, I think she was off for about 450 days or something, um, 
that, that was perfectly not acceptable run from a from a long layoff. Um, and then it was obviously the big target was the champion sprint. Um, she didn't run very well there, but there was a lot of good horses didn't run very well there. It was a bit of a muddling race. Um, I think you can absolutely forgive her. And if you are in a forgiving mood and you do forgive her, she's miles better than these. Um, you just go back to that run in a couple of years back when she she bolted up in the, the group three um, here. I think the return to Newcastle is definitely going to be in a favour. She's the highest rated horse in the field. Um, look, it's surely going to be disappointing if she doesn't win. I, I think she's a really good bet at five to two, I have to say. Wow, from listening to the two lads, those numbers are the wrong way around. She should be two to five, not five to two. Sense of duty for the two boyos. Moving on to the 345 in Newcastle, the occasion that sees the bet of the day, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Virgin bet, November handicap, it's only worth 36 grand to the winner. Wouldn't you think the November handicap be worth a lot more than that? Local Dynasty is currently our 92 favourite. Chilling him at 7 to 1, 15 to 2. Timusius Fox, it is 8 to 1 Mr. Allen, 9 to 1 Beraz, 9 to 1 Laffey, and it is 12 to 1 Mutazed, uh, Mutazayed, uh, Ferzig is 18 to 1, and it's 20 to 1 bar. I think there's a good thing in this race, boys. Uh, Tom, we'll, we'll see, can you find it first, okay? So we'll kick off with you, see if you found the good thing here. Well, I, I like the favourite lo- local dynasty. Uh-uh. Uh, yeah, I suspected it wouldn't be. Um, Go for it. Make your case. Try and try and get me just, off my good thing. I just think he's got tons of class uh, compared to some of these. Um, he's third in the D stage, third in the Golden Gate. Um, unlucky fourth at the July meeting. It's been gelded since. Um, look, this. I, I think if it wasn't the big plan, they'd have maybe kept him for something maybe in Maidan or something later on next year. Um, They've, they've kind of got him back. That I, I just think the fact that he's entered after a, a bit of a layoff is um, is a big pointer. Um, and yeah, I think he'll. I think he takes all the beating here. Um, the one that I fear the most, we'll see if it's this one is uh, Tamasius Box. Is that how you pronounce it? Um, uh-uh. But um, I, I, I quite like local dynasty here, so I'll be siding with him. Okay, local dynasty for Tom Park. Robbie Wilder, there's a few. DJ, have, I you, know, I know. have you found the good thing in the November handicap? Yeah, it's not a good thing for the rest of us, but it is for you. It's Laffy, isn't it? Hey! Make your case first, mate, please. Okay, well, Laffy is a horse that has been on my radar all season, let me tell you. Okay, so when Laffy won his maiden last season at, uh, at Nottingham, under Kieran Fallon, would you believe? Kieran Fallon's only rid- ridden this horse three times. He's won twice on him. But uh, at Nottingham, it was... Like he was really well backed and, and did everything wrong in the race, trade a huge price in running and absolutely flew home to get on top of the line. Like balance play was fourth that day, okay? Balance play has had a terrific season this season. Now rated 101 is balance play after winning, I think, three times this season. I thought going into this season that Laffey could potentially make up into not a derby winner, but a derby contender. And it was interesting that he, he ran in the in the Linkfield Derby trial and was supported at one stage into about 14 to 1, ended up going off at 22 to 1, didn't run at all that bad. Uh, finished fourth that day, military order won at Waipuru was second, Circle of Fire was third. I thought it was a reasonable enough run. He got a racing post rating of 99 for that. He went to Ascot on lightning quick ground and just he actually travelled beautifully to about the three furlong pole and then just found nothing that Tom Marcand actually accepted the situation. That was the Golden Gate Stakes. Bird at Road, who actually won over hurdles the other day, won it, okay? And then I love what happened afterwards, okay? He was gelded afterwards, okay? And he missed about two or three months, came back at Newbury and ran a real eye-catching race, I thought, on his comeback. Then, look, I thought he was far too keen next time at Newmarket, but he finally became a man last time at Newmarket. Just the other day, would you believe, it was last Friday, uh, Kieran Fallon popped out and he actually he actually came into the bridle. He travelled beautifully through the first part of the race, was in his comfort zone. And yes, he got an easy lead out in front, but he finished the race full of running. They came to him and he went away again. That was over a mile and two. A mile and two is the bare minimum of what he wants. The extra two and a half furlongs here is made for Laffey. I couldn't believe earlier on the week when he was seven to one. Now he's nine to one. Um, I just think we haven't seen the best of him yet. He's a group horse running the handicap. He's only six pounds higher now than the mark he won off at Newmarket. I think he'd be fine on this surface at Newcastle, and I think he'll win Robbie Wilders. Bravo. One hell of a case, Matt. 
pretty near a drink of water after that, didn't you? Um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna echo Parky. Uh, I'll tell you <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Well, I can't, I can't just, work. I can't change my mind off the cuff, can I? I mean, how did, that, how did you I know might, he was going to pick Naffy then? Because I, I know, I feel like I'm, I sort of know Feeling how your brain works. Like, like you, you see, you see a one next to a horse's name, and you get excited. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's, that's rude. Um, I think you made a cracking case there, to be fair, mate. But uh, like Parky, my my notes are all about local dynasty. Um, just think he's been quite unlucky in a couple of handicaps he's he's running this season. He didn't get much of a run. Uh, at Royal Ascot in the Golden Gates upon Burdett Road. Uh, similar issues, again, on the July course in that big big, uh, big handicap there. Uh, he's, I think he's definitely on a, a decent mark of 101. I think he, he is going to be running in group races eventually. And the fact that, like, you, like you've been saying, the Appleby stable is back in form. He's been kept, fr- he's been kept fresh for this. Uh, I like freshness at this time of year. I thought he might have been put away to go to Maidan uh, in the winter. But, yeah, I think this is a good horse and um, he can get the job done. Local dynasty. Okay, two votes for local dynasty and Laffey is my nap of the weekend. Very quickly, we have two races to preview at Aintree. The Boylesports Grand Theft and Handicap Chase is the first one we're going to look at. It's always a fascinating spectacle. And currently, your 130 favourite is Jess Giel, who went so close last year for Oliver uh, Oliver Greenall and Josh Guerrero. Uh, fantastic lady, Nikki Henderson and Nico de Boinville, 11 2. Born by the Sea, the Irish Raider for Paul Gilligan is 15 2. Cooper's Cross, 8 1. Nassalam, 8 1. 10 1 bar. Tom Park, what wins this? Jess Gill wins this. Um, I hope. I've had a good bet on him already earlier in the week. Um, and yeah, he just. What price, Tom? What price? I think he was 13 2. I backed him up. Um, so, oh, well yeah, we've got, a, we've got a good bet there. Um, maybe he's at 11 2. I'd have to do a look check. Anyway, we've got a good bet. I will maybe, probably maybe go it's again. Too. I, I really fancy him. I just think that, um, look, he's got a phenomenal record around these fences. Um, just touched off in the race last year by Al Dancer. Turned out to be a very well handicapped Al Dancer as well because he's £10 high now. Um, he So that was pretty remarkable running that close. Um, he was then second in the Beecher. Um, he was ninth in the Topham behind Fantastic Lady. Um, but he knows how to get round here. He's just £5 higher than last year's race. Um, one listed race in Altoy in September. Should have put him spot on for this. You know that this will have been the big target early on in the season. I've kind of mentioned it a few times, but it is important at this stage of the season that you get horses that are really, really targeted for these races. Um, so, yeah, I think Jessica will win. I have a real nagging fear of Nassalam because he's a bit of a cliff horse of mine. I'm sure he's well handicapped and he will win the big one one day, but probably when I'm not on him. So I'm just hoping that's not today. But yeah, I'm really quite keen on Jaskil here. So I, I'm pretty sure if he jumps round, he's going to take all the beating and his record over the fences suggests that he's he's got every chance of doing that. So Jaskil for me. Okay, Robbie, I have producer Dave in my ear here. He's saying, wrap it up, wrap it up, get them going, get them going. I so very quickly, that. what wins the Grand Sefton? Keep it quick. Um, Nassalam is a horse that interests me. I think he might be the type that takes to the fences. Um, so sort of put him up a couple of times last season. He's quite he's quite frustrating, but when, when he's when he wants it, he, he's definitely on a good mark, I think. Um, he likes soft ground. He's got Caelan Quinn claiming five. Caelan Quinn's a very good, uh, a very, very good apprentice for me. Uh, he was actually, his ride on Botox has was excellent. He wasn't even able to claim his £5 last week. So I think Nassalam is uh, is the one for me there, Dave. OK, and I like Freire Brambu, who I think will take to these fences because he doesn't get overly high at some of his fences. He sometimes kicks the top of them, and I think that's going to suit these fences. So Ferrero Bamboo for me at around about 11 to 1. And the final race we're going to look at on a mammoth racing postcast this week is the Boyle Sports Aka Boost on horse racing hurdle it's over two miles four furlongs we only have got the three runners west balboa who's doubly entered of course is 11 to 8 favorite brewing up a storm who wins is 15 to 8 and miller's bank is 9 to 2 robbie just tell everybody why brewing up a storm is going to win this uh, i'm not sure mate he's uh getting on a bit isn't he i think west, uh, yeah he's west, 10 yeah 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 nearly 11 um i think west balboa is the, the sort of rising force uh in this division uh really impressive uh, last season particularly at aintree um I don't know, brewing up a storm. I mean, he, he, he fell at the first last year. I'd be a bit, be a bit worried he's going to throw in. A, he do, does throw in the old dodgy leap. Um, yeah, West Balboa for me. She's getting a lot of weight from uh, brewing up a storm and is open to a lot more improvement. Okay, hard luck. Uh, Tom, what wins this? 
Yeah, you're right, DJ. Um, Bruno Pastor will win this. West Balboa, like I said earlier, I'm nagging doubts about Skelton than the, the, the form of the stable. I'm certainly not going to back one at a short price. Um, I think she's up against it anyway. Like her best performances have come big, strong, big field, strong gallop. She's going to get anything but that here. It's backed out in two mile four. Um, I just I look. She could be the, the classy, but I, I just don't think that. Um, I don't think she's got anywhere near as much in hand as the betting suggests. And Bruno Storm loves it round entry. Yeah, he fell last year, but he won this race a couple of years ago. Um, He's he's run some great races here, so yeah, I think Bruno up a storm. This, as we've said, I've said before, goes well fresh. This is going to have been his race um, for this early part of the season, I think. And yeah, I think he'll take all the beating. Correct. Two votes for Bruno up a storm. One for West Balboa in that two and a half mile three twenty. And Andrew, before we get to the nap, boys, any other fancies on Saturday, Tom? Uh, no, not really. There's a there's a potent qualifier that I'm quite interested in. There's a horse of John Quinn's called Imperial Merlin, and um, it's on my radar for the season. I love the way that he won at air in April. It suggests there's loads more to come. Six pounds certainly isn't going to stop him. I think he's he's miles better than that. As ever with these potent qualifiers, you've got it's they're often better to watch. But I just think I think he's 127. I think there's definitely more to come from him. It wouldn't surprise me if he becomes a genuine contender for the big one in Cheltenham. Um, in March, so I have he's very much on my radar for the season. Imperial Merlin, that's the 135 at entry on Saturday. Okay. Roberto Wilder, zero what do you like on Saturday, nothing, nothing else. Zil, so you you started the way you finished, nothing in the first race we previewed. Oh, I'm gonna finish with a nap, I'm gonna finish with a nap now. <laughs> uh, I, I just have one that we haven't uh, looked at the 145 at uh, at Down Royal is a listed. Haslam Hotel Handicap Hurdle. Gordon Elliott has a whole host in here. The one that I like is Magic Tricks. Carl Miller has taken off £7. I think he's turned into a well-handicapped horse. He's still only 7 would you believe? And I think this could be the day that Magic Tricks pulls the rabbit out of the hat. Sorry, that is so bad. Anyway, uh, nap time. It's nap time here on the Racing Postcast. And we will come to you first. Robbie Wilders, what's the best bet of all the racing at the weekend? Yeah, I might wind up producer Dave for this, but I'm going to nap one on Friday because we filmed these on uh, Thursday. Oh, uh, Lord. Uh, is that an issue? Geez. I mean, I, I could throw it. Sure, of course Saturday. it's an issue. It's of course an issue, but go oh, on. I'll do a Saturday. Saturday. I'll do a Saturday. No, we let you. No, no, go for Friday. Go for Friday. Right, go on. Fine. What is it? Uh, and then I'll give you my Saturday one after that. Uh, Magical Zoe, 202 at Down Royal Friday. To beat uh, Irish Point. Whoa. Yeah, she's, get, she's getting 13 pounds, mate. And she's had a run behind her. Uh, I think Irish Point, it's over two miles. She's an out and out two mile. I'm not sure he is. I think she'll win. Uh, another one. Uh, seven o'clock at Chelmsford on Saturday. Uh, oh, La Rouge Chinois. Um, you, you might think, why is he doing that? But I don't know if you know. Yeah, DJ, why are you uh, doing that? Well, because me and, me and Rodders have been doing the RPRs for the, the stayers on the flat. And this is our last one before we hand it over to the main handicappers for the year. So... The Rouge Chinois. Uh, this horse debuted for Mick Appleby a couple of weeks ago. Uh, brought, bought him from Sweden. He was really weak in the betting that day. He stayed on strongly over a mile two into third. Uh, his pedigree is all about staying distances. He's up an extra four furlongs. And he's got a smart Christian Howe of claiming three off. I think he's going to win that seven o'clock at Chelmsford on Saturday night. What type of price are we talking about here, Robbie? What would you be happy with? What uh, price I, would I, you like in the Rouge? Thought, I'll be I'll be looking for seven to two odd. It's quite a trappy little race, but I, I think you'll get around that. Le Rouge Chinois, seven o'clock Chelmsford Saturday for Robbie Wilders and also Magical Zoe at Down Royal on Friday. Tom Park, sign us off with a winning nap, please. Yeah, I'll go for the Grand Seft and the two forty five entry. Jess Gill for me, as we previously mentioned, I think he'll he loves these fences and he's going to take all the beating off a very competitive mark. Uh, excellent and everybody will know my nap is Laffy in the November handicap the 345 at Newcastle on Saturday so that is it folks we hope you enjoyed our preview of all the action this weekend on the Racing Postcast in association with the Racing Post Members Club if you're not a member please sign up there's 50% off the first three months so you must become a member I've been David Jennings he's been Tom Park he's been Robbie Wilders thanks for watching or listening have a great weekend (laughs) 